Good morning, YouTubers. It is a fine, fresh, brisky morning. It is outside zero degrees Celsius, which is 32 Fahrenheit. Uh, I just wanted to give you an update. It is, uh, this garage is 22 by 21.6. So whatever square feet that is, uh, that would be 400 and something, would it? Um, it? It is, like I said, zero. It is 18 degrees inside. So I don't have a thermometer in here. I'm going to have to get one, but just uh, if you... Uh, Take the inanimate objects. Uh, it's showing 18.8. I've set it. It's already dropped to, it's dropping to low range. It took half an hour and it warmed this place up. Now, it wasn't, I have to add, it wasn't uh, zero degrees in here. It was about 12 degrees in here when I started. Uh, I'm just hoping and thinking it will be okay, but I'm going to have to keep this garage you know 15 to 18 degrees one because there's a little addition to the family a little pup uh, she's going to be sticking around in here during the day i'm hoping that this will be able to keep it warm enough um, for her and up here i live in northern canada and we get to uh up here i'm not in far north so We'll get to minus 25 to minus 30 is an average in the winter, which is for you Americans, that is my, uh, um, negative about 12 to about negative 22 Fahrenheit. Um, pretty regularly through January and parts of February. That's a pretty regular weather up here. So as you can see, it's keep it's going down now to almost fully low mode. I'm, I'm actually utterly impressed. It's doing well, fairly quiet. Um, the reason it's really quiet, I've got it really quiet as I've uh, got the, I took out the pump and I've got it wrapped with some foam and uh, foam and a, and a small, uh, really small, towel and then I noticed that the tank was forced you'll hear now pump really loud you hear it as soon as that tank hits the front like that transfers all the noise into the body because the tank sits up between the pump and the uh, so all I did was notice when I push it back quiets right down so all I do is wedge in this cushion right in here and it uh, quiet as it makes it super quiet I, like I'm standing like you, you guys are less than six inches away um, the camera is less than six inches away oh yeah full low mode I don't know this is pretty cool I'll be okay. I'm gonna find uh, also a barricade for it for, for the pup so that the pup doesn't get hot, uh, burnt on the exhaust pipe. I think it'll learn its lesson the first time it comes close to it. But and I don't want it to knock it down. I'm gonna build a better stand for it. I'm just debating what kind of stand. I actually would like to pull a, a probably build a cart if I could find an old welding cart or something similar. I think something that only has these two, put the battery and the heater on top uh, or make myself one. I'm going to do that because I think this is the ideal, something similar to this, I'm, I'm not sure. If, you could, if anybody has any ideas of what I could use or just go get forecasters and you know, get some kind of, if I can find some old galvanized metal or metal, sheet metal, bend it. Uh, I know where I could find a bender and bend it or just put angle iron on the edge 
and put sheet metal or wood. I guess I could use wood. Yeah, I could use small angle iron. Fine, I can get uh, this type of material at the metal store, put four casters and build a little bit wider base for it so that I could mount it up, bolt it up, and then I can wheel it around. And uh, when I put it away, I can put it away in the corner, just wheel it back there. Take, I just take, when I pull the exhaust pipe out, I just bend it straight up and down uh, so that it's kind of a compact unit. I could build it more compact if I had a, uh, a, a base for it, if you will. But anyway, so far, throwing lots of heat. Consumption is really, really, this has ran at least four hours. And it, I started on three quarters of a tank, so about here. Um, and that's about, I'd say, a liter, liter two liters I burnt, maybe. Liter and a half. Um, I'm gonna do a consumption evaluation. We'll, uh, you know, we'll measure it out. We'll run it, uh, you know, we'll do a measurement. I'll try to figure out exactly what here to here is. Uh, like, we'll add a liter or exactly two liters and we'll measure where it was and measure where it is. I'll put a little uh, Sharpie and we can burn it till it hits the line and get a pretty decent, especially if it's gonna be minus uh, negative, uh, you know, 20, it'll be easy to figure that out. A couple hours probably will give us, will give us the answer. Um, but so far, I'm liking this little heater. It's gonna be a great little heater. I'm gonna design something for my, uh, my uh, utility trailer, which I kind of also use as a uh, camper. I've got windows in it and uh, battery solar set up. I've got a counter in the front, but that will i use it in uh fall and spring and uh when it's cold i'd like to use this i'm thinking about you know suspending that putting it somewhere and then bringing in either the exhaust to the wall i hate putting a hole through the wall i'd like to prefer go through the floor build something through the floor and then inside have a, a vent that kind of spreads throughout the entire unit. So, I don't know if anybody has any ideas, plop it down, down below. But uh, anyway, just a little bit more updates on these uh, Chinese diesel heaters so far. I've been utterly impressed. Um, I like the all-in-one unit for this reason right here. That's a little cleaner than if I had to build a unit it would have been okay to get a loose unit. You can get them loose where these the the actual uh, sorry the actual heater, the tank, the fuel pump. You got line. You don't get this um, housing. This actual housing doesn't come with it. I kind of like this housing uh, because it's easy to move around, carry, put in a case, or whatever I want to do in the future. It's not going to be that hard. I'm thinking I'm going to put this in the in a case, some kind of box, or I'm going to buy a big, like a, a knockoff Pelican case or something that I can put it in. So when I go camping, I just take the lid off. And, uh, or I've seen a guy, I can't remember where I've seen it, but um, if you own a Jeep, as you guys might have seen, I have a Jeep. Um, they make these tables that go out or these uh, uh, these racks that go out and sit on your wheel. They saddle over your wheel, come down. It's just square tubing. They sit over the wheel. They come down and they build like a, a shelf. You can get them. They'd be easy to build. I got my welding machine. I could build my own. Build it and then a small shelf. And what I was thinking is did, do what he did. He had a rooftop tent on his, uh, I can't remember what he had, in the SUV. He had a rooftop tent and he was using, he had a nice long blower hose and he was hanging it off the wheel of his SUV and bringing the hose up, up into his rooftop tent. And uh, he was getting his heat and it was, there was snow on the ground and he was camping. So 
I think that that would be a, a great idea. I'm gonna change the location of this. I kind of want it up, you know. I don't want it so low, but I don't. I don't think it matters. But I'd like it tucked in a little more. It's making the unit wider than it needs to be. But anyway, back to what I was saying. He he. Uh, that looked pretty good. I think it's a great idea to leave this outside, um, like in the garage here. I'm not worried. Everything is. If it actually did catch fire, it'd be a little scary. But it's not a lot it can burn. Uh, although it's close to this stuff. If there's enough fuel in the unit, it could be dangerous. There's a lot of shutoffs. There's an overheat temperature shutoff. There's a, but still, if a, if a fuel leak happened, which I think would turn off because there's a pile of error messages. If you don't have fuel delivery, it shuts off. If you don't have, but still, could it, could it, yeah. I mean, it could, something could happen, so. <clears throat> but there's a lot of built-in safeties I haven't heard. I've been doing my research for probably six months on these. I haven't seen anybody have a catastrophic failure. There's been some failures. They're not the most reliable. Um, there are fuel pump issues. So you're going to want to carry a fuel pump issue, a fuel, maybe a spare fuel pump. There are issues with the sensor that's in the heater. The temperature sensor in the heater, which is this little icon here, showing it's okay. There is also um, the glow plug. If you don't have a glow plug, you're not going to have a heater. Uh, and the glow plug usually is from uh, carbonization, so dirt. It gets dirty. The unit gets uh, dirty from probably burning fuel like this. I will get dirty quick. You're supposed to clean it up. That's regular maintenance. If you think you're going to buy one of these and not have to and clean, clean fuel, you're going to have to um, clean this up. Okay? So, you're going to have to take apart the... There's lots of videos on it. Take apart the glow plug. Take apart the heating unit. Take apart the glow plug. Clean the glow plug. Clean the little screen. You can buy kits. So I would buy a maintenance kit. I will be buying a maintenance kit. Mean, you know what? I'll do a complete video on that. I'll do a full, when it's dirty, it's probably in the next month or so, I figure I'm going to need to do this. I've, I've ordered spare screens. I'm going to have a spare fuel pump. I have a little extra fuel cable. I have, we're going to clean that filter out there if it needs it. I don't think it'll need it in this environment, but in an outside environment, potentially that would get a little dirty. And then we're going to clean out the burner. We're going to clean it out. Uh, do a little video, show how I'm going to do that. But for now, we're getting the heat we want. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you find this information good, I'll try. If there's anything that anybody wants to see or, or let me know, and I'll uh, put it, if I can do it, I'll do it. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.